Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Today in this video, we're going to learn a command because that's what we do in this series, the Linux Crash Course series. What we do is we learn a very important Linux topic, one video at a time, and these videos can be watched in any order. And today, what we're going to do is cover the time command. And the time command is really cool and very useful. With it, you can time scripts, commands, programs, Basically, you could find out how long something takes. And this is one of those commands that I can't believe I didn't cover until now. I guess I couldn't find the time. And I use this command personally frequently. It's really useful. One of the things that I use it for is to time my Ansible provision runs. Sometimes I want to find out, you know, how long it takes for a system to be provisioned. But sometimes I notice really strange things. For example, one time I noticed that my provisions were taking literally twice as long to run and I knew that because of the time command, which I use with that command every time. Once I noticed that, I looked at my code and I realized that some of my roles are being run twice. So because of the time command, I was able to see the fact that the script was taking longer to run than normal, that identified that there was a problem and I was able to solve it. And speaking of Ansible, I have a brand new Ansible course available over on Udemy. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started with Ansible. In fact, it's one of two brand new courses I have available over on Udemy. First, if you're in the process of learning Linux for the very first time, you should definitely check out my Linux Essentials course. Not only will this course teach you everything you need to know to get started and learn the basics of Linux, it's also going to help you get certified and earn your Linux Essentials credential through LPI. And the Linux Professional Institute is the world's largest Linux and open source focused vendor neutral certification body so by earning certifications through LPI, your credentials will be recognized around the world. But even if you don't have any interest in getting certified, this course is still a great fit for those of you that are getting started with Linux because it'll teach you all the basics. Also, I recently released an Ansible course as well, which will teach you everything you need to know to get up and running with Ansible. Ansible is one of, if not the most popular configuration and automation platforms in the Linux ecosystem. So it's definitely something that you need to learn. Ansible is a powerful and easy to learn platform that'll enable you to automate even the most complicated Linux administration tasks. And just like with my Linux course, each lesson will break down even the most complicated components and concepts into easy to understand lessons. And by the end of the course, you'll learn everything that you need to know to use Ansible as part of your daily tool set. And thank you guys so much for checking out my new courses and supporting Linux learning. I really appreciate it. Now let's get started and learn the time command. All right, so here I am on my terminal, and what I'm going to do is show you the time command right now. And you know what? It's really easy to use. What we could do is type the word time just like this, and then after that, any Linux command we want. Now, the first example is a little boring to be honest, but I'm going to show you a better example shortly. But I'm going to use this example because it's simple and it's going to show you exactly what the time command does. Now, in my home directory here, I don't actually have any files, which is why ls shows nothing. But that's not the point. What we're trying to find out is how long it took to run the command. Now, the ls command is done in, you know, under a second, so it's probably not a good command to use with this, but it is going to show you what the time command does. And here we see three lines of output. We see how long it took to run the command in real mode, user mode, and system mode. I'm going to go over what those modes mean in a little bit, but what I want you to do is just focus on the first one for now, real time. Now, another example that might be a bit more useful is to use the time command when you're updating your system. In the case of Ubuntu, which is what I'm logged into right now, I can update the system by running sudo apt and then dist upgrade, just like that. But what I'm going to do is use this command with the time command. Now, if you're not running Ubuntu or Debian, then this command won't work for you. What you could do instead is just replace the sudo apt dist upgrade part with whatever the command is to update the packages on your system. So for example, it could be sudo dnf update or something similar. Anyway, what this command is going to do is install any updates that might be available, and it's going to tell me exactly how long it took to do that. Unfortunately, I don't really have any updates available at this time. So again, we have an example that's not going to be useful on my end, 
But on your end, if you wanted to time something like updating your system, you could definitely do that with the time command. Now let's see an even better example. What I'm going to do is use the time command with wget. How long does it take to download something? Now what I'll do right now is paste in the URL to an ISO image for a Linux distribution. Now obviously it doesn't matter which ISO you download, you just need to download something for this example. And normal Linux OS is one of the first things I thought of, so I'll just go with that. Anyway, let's go ahead and download it and see how long it takes. And check it out. If I list my storage, I have the Alma Linux OS ISO image downloaded on my system. And right above that, we see the output from the time command when I ran it. I was able to download the Alma Linux ISO in 42 seconds. Now what I'm going to do is just bring back the very simple example from the beginning. Because what I want to do right now is explain the output. What does real mean, user, and system? Well, let's go over that. So first of all, real refers to real time. More often than not, this is going to be the number that you're going to pay attention to. So in this case, when I ran the time command to download the ISO image, real time is the time that I took into account when I mentioned that it was around 42 seconds. Now we also have two other modes here. We have user mode and system mode. System mode is also referred to kernel mode, by the way. And both of these are going to be a bit out of scope for this particular video. User mode and system mode aren't necessarily specific to the time command, but in case you're curious, user mode refers to the time in which the process or script was being ran in user mode, and then you could have aspects of the program or script being run in system mode. Now system mode is the kernel side of things, and user mode is the user side of things. So if you as the user were to launch Firefox, that's running in user mode. But on the other hand, if you were to configure modules or anything at the kernel level, then that's going to be in kernel mode. We're not going to go over that in this video any more than that. I just wanted you to at least have the definition. But the takeaway so far is that real time, well, that's what you're going to be interested in most of the time. Now, if we check the man page for the time command, you'll see that we have a few options here, but when compared to other commands, the options here aren't necessarily going to be as useful. Time is useful in and of itself because it, well, like I mentioned a few times now, it times how long it takes to process something. That's really good information to have. But right here, we have some other options that we could use if we wanted to. So the dash O option, for example, that lets us write output to a file. You see the output right there? Missing line breaks, but you get the basic idea. Now notice that I typed the fully qualified path to the time command when I used that option. So this is the command that I ran right here. Now normally you don't have to type the full path to the command unless the command is not located in your path. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I have a video that covers that, so don't worry about it. But the takeaway here is that the behavior is actually going to be different if we do or do not include the full path to the command. For example, dash O command not found. However, if we type the fully qualified path and then we run it, you can see that it does indeed work. And there we have the output. Now, whether or not you have access to options depends on how you call the time command. For example, if I use time and then dash O for output file, I give it the output file and then I type the command then it's going to give me command not found. However, if I type the fully qualified path, meaning I add slash user slash bin to the front of the command because that's where it's located, then I'm able to use the option. Now, before we go any further though, why is it that we have to type the full path to the time command just to be able to use options? Other commands don't require us to do this, so why do we have to do that with the time command? Well, the reason why this is the case is because there's two different kinds of time commands. There's a built-in version, meaning that it's built into your shell, the bash shell, and then there's the external time command. So if you just type the word time, you're using the built-in shell version, but if you type the full path to the time command, you're using the external version that has more options. Now on some distributions, this might be configured differently, so your behavior might be different, but for the most part, all you have to do if you want to use options with the time command is type the full path to the command as we did in the previous example. 
Now, one thing that I want to mention about this is that anytime you use the dash O option and then give it a file name, it's going to overwrite the file. Now, what we could do is add dash A for append mode. And if this works, what that should do is append to the end of the file rather than overwriting it every time. So I'll just go ahead and do this a few times. And here you can see that every time I ran that command, it appended information to the end of the file rather than overwriting it. So if you want to access append mode, just add the dash A option. But for the most part, time is very easy to use. All it is, is just time, and then you type a command or perhaps a path to a binary, a script, maybe even wget for downloading something. Anytime you want to time something, the time command is a great way to do it. And there you go. Like I mentioned earlier, the time command is very, very simple and very easy to use. It's definitely something that I recommend that you remember, and thankfully it's not really hard to remember. All you have to do is type time and then a command, and that's it. So what did you guys think of this shorter episode in the Linux Crash Course series? I definitely wanted to make sure that I covered this command, but sometimes there's just not as much to cover as other commands. Sure, there's a few other options on there, but for the most part, Usage of the time command is just time and then command, and that's all there is to it. Anyway, I had a ton of fun producing this episode for you guys, so I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then be sure to click the like button to let YouTube know. Anyway, I have a ton of great content coming that I can't wait for you to see, so be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.